Hi, my name is Robert Shelley, and my law firm assists healthcare professionals with employment contract and independent contractor agreement issues. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about what is a letter of intent for a medical job. So, you're getting a job in healthcare. What exactly is a letter of intent? Um, so, I, I think of a letter of intent as being interchangeable uh, with an offer letter in, in this scenario. So if you are applying for a new job, looking into moving to a, you know, a new organization, kind of the standard process would be, obviously there'd be some uh, you know, an initial mutual attraction between the organization and the provider. Uh, they'll likely you know, have a phone call and then they'll move forward with perhaps a in-person interview, have you on campus, take a look around, maybe it's an outpatient office. Um, and then at that point, assuming they are interested in offering you the position, um, there's kind of two ways it can go. One, you can discuss terms and it can go straight to them providing you with an employment contract that you will need to review and you can negotiate from that. Or other organizations will provide uh, a letter of intent or offer letter uh, which kind of outlines the major terms of the agreement. And then once, um, you know, an agreement has been met on those terms, then they'll move forward with drafting the employment agreement and getting it to the provider. Now, if you do have a letter of intent uh, and you do sign it, many people ask, all right, well, is this binding? So if I agree to terms in the letter of intent. And like normal terms will be base comp, productivity, who pays for malpractice insurance and tail if it's a claims made policy, or the benefits, maybe the restrictive covenants, just like the main bullet points of an employment contract. If you agree to those terms, are you stuck with them once you get the full agreement? And the, the answer is in 99.9% .9 of the time, no, you are not stuck with them even though you've agreed to the terms of the letter of intent. Unless the letter of intent states explicitly, this is a binding letter of intent and the terms of it cannot be renegotiated, you, you absolutely can come back to the employer and say, well, after reviewing the formal employment agreement, it's different than what you, you know, kind of led on for me to believe. And these are the changes that I need in order to feel comfortable signing it. Now, how the employer takes that is going to vary. Um, if you're gonna come back at them and say, uh, I have read the full employment agreement, I am not going to agree to the terms that we've already agreed to in the letter of intent, many employers are just gonna say, take a hike, right? Like, we're, we're not going to do that. However, uh, I can, from firsthand experience of doing this for 20 years, uh, the letter of intent is great, and it does provide a good kind of guidepost as far as what you can expect. But once you see the actual language of the contract, it can change things significantly, and you absolutely should renegotiate the terms uh, if they are not favorable you know, for you as the provider. Uh, I think the best way of approaching this with the employer is to say, look, I understand we reached an agreement on the main terms in the letter of intent, however, because of this, this, and this, or the language explicitly states this, which changes, you know, kind of what you led me on to believe, I need these changes. You need to justify and explain to them why uh, the actual language in the contract has, you know, kind of made you change your mind about the terms of the letter of intent. I think justifying and explaining, you know, in, in a reasonable manner, why more changes are needed, uh, you know, will get a much better response from the employer than just saying, well, after reviewing the contract, I want $50,000 more. And that's it, without any explanation. Um, anytime you're negotiating, I always think backing it up with statistics and data are the best way for anyone to get changes in a contract. Meaning, if they're offering you something that's in the 75th percentile of you know, a national average, uh, and you're asking for something that's in the 120th percentile or something like you know, crazy like that, well, they're just gonna laugh you off. So 
uh, if you can bring hard statistics and say, all right, in my last position, I performed at the 90th percentile in our view production, uh, but you're offering me a, you know, a, a salary that's in the 25th, we need to, you know, kind of meet in the middle there to, so that whatever you're compensating me at matches what my productivity, uh, you know, has been historically, something like that. So uh, in short, a letter of intent is just simply kind of a, an outline of the main points of the contract. Even if you sign the letter of intent, you can still renegotiate once you uh, obtain the uh, actual employment agreement, unless it states it's a binding letter of intent, which like nearly none of them do. Uh, and then if you are going to try to renegotiate the terms of a letter of intent that you've already agreed to, bring some facts and statistics and data to the table uh, to justify why you want those changes made. And you'll get a much better reaction from the employer. All right, uh, if you have any questions about an employment contract or independent contractor agreement, uh, feel free to contact my law firm at the contact information listed below in the description. Uh, or uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. And I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks.